What's up and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at importing lights into Twinmotion. That's cool. And it's obviously really cool, but it's really cool because we now have that as an option. Like we can actually do that. We couldn't do this a few months ago. We didn't have this option. As of 2022, we can now do this. Totally awesome. So uh, before we get into this video, if at any point in this video, you happen to learn something, which I hope you do, why are you here? Please demolish that like button. It really helps me out quite a lot. Okay. Also consider subscribing. That does too. Getting into it now. So I am in just a basic twin motion file, and we're going to start with directly linking an open Revit file and importing the lights. You know, we're going to ultimately import more than just the lights, but we want to go through the process of importing these lights and seeing what kind of result we get from that. Because the cool thing with the latest release of Twin Motion 2022 is that we now have the option, and not even an option, just it's built into Twin Motion. Whenever you direct link from Revit, it's going to replace all of your Revit lights, which you have taken so many tedious hours to place in the correct location with an attempt to make the wattage and lumens somewhat correct. It's going to bring all of those in, but not just as models, but it's going to replace them in a sense and add twin motion lights, which, oh my gosh, if you ever used twin motion before this year, you knew that would be one of the biggest things we'd ever want to see in twin motion. Because before that, we'd have to literally go ahead and place all of these light sources ourselves. All these lights we have to replace, like, ugh. We looked at previous videos where we would literally replace objects, replace full lights with all of these actual outputs, which that's totally great. It's not a big deal. Uh, but now it's, we don't have to worry about that at all. You know, we had crashes with that before, but not anymore. We just import all of these as lights. So where would we see this? Well, we go to import and I've got this model. And of course I want to keep the hierarchy because I want to see each individual light. I want to see each individual model element. Of, of course I want to do that. Then I want to max my UV precision, of course, and then my process. This is where we decide, well, do I want to bring in every single object together, and that includes the lights, or do I want to bring in the meshes and the lights? Well, um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to first import the meshes, but right now, let's, let's look at all the light settings. So if I were to just import lights, I have specific settings to lights, and that is set intensity to 300 lumens, by default, and that's going to change every single light in your entire Revit project to the light source that it replaces into Emotion to be 300 lumens, which I like because it's a really good go by. It's a good default. I can use the original if you're really confident in what you did in Revit. Just know that they may not all be the same. You use one light, you download this light from Revit City, you find another light somewhere else, someone else made this light, they changed the light fixture, like all of that. You're going to get different outputs. So if you want to use the original, do that. Uh, if you want to set the values to Twinmotion default, that's good too. What the default is, that's always a good question. I can't actually answer that. Maybe that is somewhere on the internet. Probably is. But set all the values uh, to Twinmotion default, that's probably a good test. And we're going to test all these, so don't worry about that. But for now, I want to set the intensity to 300 lumens for all my lights. Cool. And so I'm actually just going to bring in um, my meshes first. And I'll show you why uh, because of the organization. So let's go ahead and import this. And... We're going to see nothing done here, of course, except my direct link being processed, which is fantastic. I've got my model in, and we'll see all the lights here soon after we bring in all the meshes. So the meshes, uh, it's quite a lot. But the nice thing about this is that we want to split this up. At least this is my thinking. Because this model is so big and I have so many lights and all this, I definitely don't want to deal with having all my lights here. So I do want to actually go ahead and collapse my hierarchy right there, collapse my hierarchy. And then I can see that yeah, there's my model. And then there are all of the different folders and objects, which is great because I have all of these objects in folders. I don't need to see that necessarily. So with all that said, I can just collapse this whole model. I don't care about this. You know, we're, we're really worried about lights. Okay. So let's go back here again and I'm going to import. I'm going to do choose the exact same model, everything the exact same, but now let's just choose lights. And instead, we're going to make sure that our intensity is set to 300 lumens regardless, and then import. And then we have a second instance of it, which is, that's cool. That's what we want. And if I were to come back into Revit just to see what the heck happened, I can look at this in my connections. And look, there are two connections. Woo! 
What does that really mean? Well, that doesn't mean much other than I have two different instances of the same. Does it matter that much? No, but for the purpose of what we're doing here, we want them separate because I have brought in light separately. <laughs> so I'm gonna come over here and we can see that we have both of them. If I expand this, do we even see a difference in the naming? No, we don't. So this is where I would probably um, want to call this lighting or lights or something. And then you can call this meshes or model, whatever. So basically it's set up completely this way. And so this is really nice. It's really nice from an organizational standpoint because I can manage them both individually. Let's say I update the lights, you know, I update the lights in Revit, boom, just reload this really easy done. Now I could, if I bring them all in as one model, that's totally fine. I can, you can always do that, but just know that your lights will just be jumbled up in this mess of a model. This basically is saving you the trouble of finding all of your lights in the mess of your model and making a dedicated folder of lights. That's kind of all it is. And yeah, I mean, there, there's more reasons why you'd want to do this. Maybe you want to do a lighting study. So it's real easy to just um, phase this on and off. You have different, you know, yeah, yeah. Different design options for lighting. Total. You could do that if you want, but we're showing you the difference in organizing them that way, because it's really helpful to do that if you really need to just off the bat, knowing that, Hey, all my lights are in that folder. Everything else, the model is completely different. It's, it's somewhere else. So great. So first of all, let's go ahead and hide the model. And then just look at all of our lights. Yeah, they're there. There's a ton. And there's they're mainly running around this corridor. We got a couple others floating out here. And the cool thing is if I select them all or any of them, you can see that, yep, 300 lumens. It's all the exact same, which is awesome. This is really, really great. And yeah, if I, if I really want to, I can come over here and I can change them all individually. I can select whichever ones that I want over here and I'll select them all. Yeah, do that if you want. Um, this is not going to be a video of actual lights themselves, but just know that the settings will all be the same, which is great. So with that said, yeah, we were able to import all these, but what, what kinds of lights are they? Well, it looks to me that, yeah, we have the names of the lights, of course, but what kind of you know, actual light source are they? Or what, they, what would they be comparable to? Well, it looks like they're all coming in as these omnidirectional lights, which is that a huge deal? No, um, that's not, it really isn't a huge deal because maybe we come over here and we decide, well, yeah, these two, these two lights in particular, they're very important to me because they're not going to be just like the other lights. So I can simply select these two lights and I can right click this and replace object. And what do I want to replace it with? Well, maybe I want to replace it with more of this kind of a spotlight. I can replace that, start replace, and then that's it. We're done now. Obviously, I need to edit these, you know, rotationally because Twin Motion is not smart enough to know that I want them the lights facing down. I thought that would have been more of a given, but that's okay. Not a huge deal. Uh, it's really easy to rotate these once they're in place. Not not a big deal at all. So, yeah, you get the idea here. But it's really easy to to replace the the types of objects and the types of uh, light sources. But just know, obviously, the icon is going to tell us a lot. This is an omnidirectional light. Um, just know that they're all going to come in as omnidirectional lights, at least having chosen what we did. Now, another, let's look at another experiment here. So with our model, I don't want to see it. I don't need to worry about seeing it right now, but something else I want to do is end up re-importing the lights and just so we can try this out a different way. So come back to import here. Okay. And so with that, maybe we want to come in here and see, well, what happens if I go to my direct link settings? And I change this, these light settings from set intensity to 300 lumens to used original. Well, let's press OK and go ahead and just re-import this. And so this is going to re-import. And we can see this is really great. It's really good to know. Uh, because I chose the second model, which it's hard to tell because it looks the same, it acts the same, and everything appears to be the same. How do I know it's different and it, I chose the right model? Well, the lights folder was renamed to... <laughs> the actual Revit model name that it was once before. And why, it, that's a great question. Um, it's just kind of a, an unfortunate side of re-importing or resynchronizing. It's going to happen. Now, if I were to have synchronized my Revit model from Revit back to Twinmotion, these would have both changed because these are both referencing the same model. So just be aware of that. So because I re-imported that single one, I can see, uh, yeah, I had to rename it back to light. So what are we gonna see here? Well, you know, I don't see much of a difference. They're all 300. Um, 
not much that I can see is a difference. Um, just the way it is, you know? And can we confirm that this is correct? Direct link settings. For some reason, it defaulted back to 300 lumens. It, again, I think it's a great default. I think it's uh, something you should totally do. Whether you want to use original or not is up to you. Now, let's go ahead and try the, the set all values to twin motion default. That will be very interesting. And then we can once again re import this and see what happens. Well, and once again, we can see all are 300. So, what does this tell me? Well, we're going to have to take this test one step further because maybe the fact that I set this once and I come back here and I can see direct link settings are still set to 300 lumens. Maybe I just need to completely re import all this. Well, okay, we'll delete this and we'll delete that, which is all the lights. I, of course, I need to actually delete all of the lights from my project. So, boom, delete. Let's go ahead and re import this like hard like a different way. So use original. So you can see we're going back to the beginning here. We're going to process just the lights. We're going to use the original as far as the lighting settings themselves. And we want to keep the hierarchy so we have full control. Import this guy. This will come in. And of course, I want to rename this one more time to lights so I can see the difference. And let's select these lights. Look, 60 lumens, 60 lumens. They're all 60 because these happen to be all the same light. So very cool. Um, just know and look, look at these. <laughs> this is a great example of me trying too hard or just a bad model or something. But that is coming in at 1800 lumens. Now, is this too bright? Um, perhaps so. What about this one? Also 1800. They're, you can see they're the exact same uh, type, which is kind of what I would expect to see. But also the same with these. They are all the same. Cool. So what is this? First of all, what is this looking like? You know, um, we should have done this before, but we will. Don't worry about that. So here we go. Ta-da. And then let's just make this dark because we want to we want to see some of our lights in action. Well, like what 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 is going on here? Well, um, we we do see them. There they are. Um, there's one. Press F. Yeah, this one is very bright, as we can see. Um, I don't know where it is, to be honest with you. This is in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of this very small room. So this is doing absolutely nothing for me. And if I were myself or anyone else, I'd probably recommend deleting these um, because it's in the middle of a room that apparently has no floor either. So with that, let's go to any one of these other lights because it's going to give me <laughs> a better idea of what to expect. So Yes, we looked at all the lights and yeah, they're working, uh, but are they that great? No, we're going to have to change some of them because they're clearly not bright enough. But the one thing I want to do first, and I don't like that this is a default, but just it's the way it is. Come into our lighting, exposure more, and then we'll turn auto exposure off. This is the real lighting levels, you know, without auto exposure on. Now, we have no other light as far as anything. So that's part of the problem here, but we can immediately see that I am having problems with the amount of light in my model. And so, yeah, I do want to be able to select these lights and see, yeah, they're, they're clearly not bright enough, but I can easily bring up the lumens of these individual lights if I want to. Of course, I need to be able to see my model so I have some context to everything. So there it is, and I can change the intensity just like that. Of course, a lot of it has to do with the attenuation. Um, not a huge deal, but... Uh, let's come back to auto exposure, turn that back on so we can actually start to see everything here in action, turn a model back on. And yep, we can see these working. We can select them individually. And at that point, start to update them individually. We can select them all at once, whatever. You can see that this actually does matter. All these settings really do matter. And I have a different video on these settings. So um, that's one big thing to go look at because it'll give me an idea of really what to expect here. So putting that back at 60, we can get an idea of what this is consistently. Okay, so th this is all great, um, but we're going to do one more. Well, I want to test this one more time, so I'm going to end up just deleting all the lights, coming to my import, and deleting that import. So with everything deleted, I'm going to try and import these one more time and set my lighting settings to set all values to twin motion default. Well, I, look at this. I can't even choose this. Not sure if this is a bug, not sure what's going on here, but you can see we have the option of set intensity to 300 lumens or use original. Now, I like 300, so it's consistent, but you can see the, the clear difference between using the original and the 300 because what we brought in came all 60 lumens, except the two that 
obviously it was good to find because I was able to see that this is there are 1800 lumens are in a weird place. They shouldn't even exist in my model. So it's a really good way to find and, you know, find those kinds of lights. Um, but nonetheless, if I just want it looked looking consistent, setting to 300 is the way to go. So I can import and let's go ahead and actually just test all of it. So bringing all this in, you can see, hopefully whenever this does ultimately import uh, the difference between bringing all this in as one model or meshes versus lights. I love that we have that option uh, because it allows you to really quickly organize them differently off the bat immediately. Really nice stuff. So, okay, this is now done and we can see here. Yeah. If I expand all of this, you know, it, it's going to be hard to find my lights now. Um, it's in, they're in here somewhere, <laughs> you know, which that's great that they're in here. But is that ultimately that helpful? You know, not really. I do believe they are in here and we can see, yep, there are my lights. Is it a huge deal that they're in here, you know, disorganized? Not so much because I can change this from all to light and then here are all my lights. So I would recommend doing this even if you look through all of, uh, you know, the different folders that only come in if you just import lights alone. This is one way to do it. And because I know these are all the exact same lights except for those weird two here at the end, I can select them all. And I can change all the intensity at one time. I can change all the attenuation at one time, which is totally the, what I would want to do. And we can get an idea of what to expect. So this is, that's more of what I would hope to be able to see really. And this was really easy to do. Now I just chose to bring all of it in with the model. And so you could do it this way, just choosing lights. And then I can go back to all, and then that's it. I don't have to worry about finding them or select them individually here. It would be an absolute pain and a mess. And honestly, even bringing them in with, within the wall and all the, the different models themselves, just as lights, they come in with specific folders for every single light. You can see this is a mess in of itself. And so you might still want to use this uh, basically filtering option to get down to the specific light source that you need to edit. So that will do it for this video. We looked at all the different import options when it comes with lights. The great thing now is that we can, with direct links, we can import lights in from Revit mo our Revit model and Twin Motion will update them to be Twin Motion lights. Cool, really great stuff. Obviously, they're gonna you you need to take it from there and you know make it look the way you want it to. Have it make sure make sure that it's the correct light source, the light type, whatever. But beyond that, you know you don't have to worry about placing them yourself, which is totally awesome because you already went to the trouble of doing that in Revit. Thank goodness for this. I love this change so much. It's going to make lighting your model so easy into a motion compared to what it was last year. So this is a fantastic change. I'm so happy to see it. So if you have any questions, leave those in the comment section below. Be sure to answer all of them. Don't worry about that. And that will do it again for this video. So if you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out quite a lot. Also tells me that you might have learned something. And consider subscribing because that helps so much as well. So again, thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thanks so much.